The Secret Science Behind Miracles by Max Freedom Long. Chapter 12. Raising the Dead Permanently and Temporarily. Case 22. The dead can be raised. There are two kinds of raising, however. One, a complete restoration to life in the physical body. The other, a temporary materialization of a physical body for a departed spirit to use. In both of these cases, we find proofs of the correctness of the ancient beliefs of the kahunas. We have accounts of men being permanently raised from the dead in Christian and other religious literature. The kahunas were able, under certain conditions, to demonstrate such feats and also to explain them in a comprehensible fashion. The temporary raising of a living body for the use of a spirit of the dead was common in Polynesia, and as materialization has been studied and repeatedly verified in psychical research. Case 22. A kahuna raises the dead before Dr. Brigham. It takes but a short time in a warm climate like that of Hawaii for a dead body to begin to decay. However, there is a condition of deep trance or coma which so closely resembles death that there is a grave danger of being mistaken for dead if such a condition or of being, alive, of being buried alive. The kahunas believed that decay could not set in until the shadowy body of the low self was entirely withdrawn from the body. The two spirits of the lower man can be out of the physical body in their shadowy bodies and can travel to a great distance as is done in astral travel, but there is always a connecting thread, the silver cord of theosophy of shadowy material joining the physical body and the low shadowy body. It is only when this thread is broken that decay sets in. After the connecting thread is broken, it would take an act of the high self to restore tissues which had begun to decay and make possible the return of life to one who has died. On the other hand, if the thread is unbroken, as is often the case when death comes without an injury to the tissues, as in drowning. Life may be restored if a return to the body is made possible for the spirits. The shadowy body of the low self, as has been already explained, is an ideal storage place for vital force, and when the spirits leave the body, most of the vital force is taken along in the vital in the shadowy body when the dense physical body is left behind after the removal of the elements of consciousness and vital force from it unconsciousness and inaction result studies made of patients suffering from epilepsy show that after the characteristic cry in quotes cry and fall there is no action of either the body waves or the brain waves as measured by recording instruments. The indication is that the two selves of the patient in their shadowy bodies have been driven out of the body temporarily, or as an alternate possibility, the two selves have remained in the body but have been robbed of the last vestige of vital force by a spirit of the obsessing kind, type, sorry, type. Consciousness returns to the patient in about the length of time required to rebuild the supply of vital force. The case. Dr. Brigham, during one of his field trips in search of rare indigenous plants in Hawaii, took refuge in a coastal village during a very severe storm. In the storm, a native lad of about 16 was drowned. All efforts to revive him failed, and a kahuna living some distance away was summoned. The kahuna, an old man, arrived and began work about eight hours after the accident. The boy's body was cold, 
and, when examined by Dr. Brigham, shortly before the arrival of the kahuna, seemed to have begun to stiffen in rigor mortis. The kahuna sat down near the body and set to work to use his psychic powers to learn what had become of the lad's two spirits. In this work, as he later explained, he had the help of several spirit friends. Open bracket. The shadowy body cord must still have connected the body to the low self of the lad, although probably stretched to the breaking point. Close bracket. The boy's selves were found wandering in a confused state and brought back to the body, being urged to remain there and make every possible effort to re-enter it. The body was warmed, and while the kahuna applied his hands to it, he gave of his own vital force. He also used verbal suggestion to cause the return into the body, using as a physical stimulus a stroking and squeezing as if the spirits were re-entering by way of one of the big toes and was being squeezed up the leg into the body. The kahuna also invoked the god, the god in quotes, in brackets, high self, asking for aid. After about an hour, he announced that the spirits of the boy were entering the body. Gradually, the flesh became warmer, the heart began to beat, and the boy opened his eyes. The recovery was so rapid that in a short time he was asking for food. Dr. Brigham, greatly impressed by the demonstration of the kahuna magic, asked many questions of the kahuna, learning little beyond the fact that the god whose aid had been given was one of the Amakuas, or parental and greatly trustworthy spirits, who have formerly been men living in bodies on earth. He kept track of the Hawaiian lad for a number of years, and there seemed never to have been appreciable after-effects from the death by drowning. The aid of the spirits, who have once been men and women in flesh, is no new thing. The annals of spiritualism and psychical research are filled with accounts of successful healing of the living through the ministrations of the spirit dead. The most successful of these spirit healers often speak of their work being done by prayers to higher spirits or the conventional concept of God. The spirits, like the living, have no way to make direct contact with the level of consciousness one step above and can only speculate about the high beings and their form of mentation which enables them to use a mysterious power for magical healing. Many spirits have given their ideas of the mechanisms by which healing is accomplished, but even when they claim to have exact knowledge, no two of them agree. They are amusingly like the living, each evolving his own explanation and rejecting all others in the face of the sharp contradictions found in the explanations given by the spirits of the dead, we do well to fall back on the ancient explanations given by the kahunas, for they are correct in all details so far as we are able to check them with our present limited knowledge. And, that is, and what is more important, they work as a basis for practical application.